Hi, my name is Zach Melman Carsey. I want to start by saying thank you to Creator Square Johnstown in Pennsylvania for inviting me to give this virtual artist presentation and workshop. Lastly, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via my Instagram or email. My creative process, like many, start with sketching things around me that inspire my concept. These include, but are not limited to, large industrial structures, old pipe and ventilation fixtures, and worn surfaces. My approach to sketching is unconventional because it relies on a visual memory and the translation of what I saw or imagined into a 3D modeling program. I start by sketching objects from memory, choosing to focus on parts of a whole that will be combined with each other later. After I'm happy with my burst sketches, I tend to resize the pieces to not only fit on my smaller resin printer, but also so I can limit the overall size of the pieces I create. The printer I am primarily using is a resin style printer called an Anycubic Photon. I've used these for a couple years now, and I can highly recommend them with the third-party slicer, ChituBox, which helps prepare my models by creating support structures for the printer to understand. Using the printed pieces, I glue the parts together to make an ideal composition. After I'm happy with my creation, I attempt to recreate my desired design in the modeling program. I then refine and draft new additions that will lead to my final sketch and eventual first draft. In this section, I'm preparing the final sketch to have a cast stone set pave component. I do this by using the command extract ISO curve, which draws a line along a 3D surface, which I then use to cut out a section of the surface. The cutout section of the surface is then given a solid form, which will be subtracted from the main body. After my final draft is printed and the pave component is cast, the cast piece will be able to key tightly into the main body of my piece.
My process for creating a Pave pattern in Rhino starts with creating objects that emulate the components of a four-prong stone setting. A pilot hole to assist in cutting a seat for the stone, four prongs measuring at 0.8 millimeters in diameter, and placed at each corner of a circle symbolic of my two millimeter stone. I change the color of each component so they can be easily identified. The green cylinder will eventually be subtracted from the object to create a pilot hole, while the purple rounded cylinders are added to the object to create my prongs. The red circle is symbolic of the two millimeter stones I will set and will assist in proper placement. After drafting the layout of an individual setting, I use the command orient on SRF. This command allows me to point and copy my chosen object all along a selected surface. My first attempt, I chose to lay out my settings from the center out, but disliked the overall look. I restarted and chose to place the settings starting from the outer edge going inward instead, overall giving a crisper look to my Pave setting. Because the object I am Pave setting is symmetrical, I only have to do half and can mirror one side to the other. After I finish my placement, I use the boolean difference command to subtract the green cylinders and the boolean union command to combine the purple prongs to the Pave component body. In this portion, I'm starting to finalize my design by cutting out the different portions that are going to eventually be cast. I'm going to be casting one part that will act as a bale and the other part that will be my pave setting. As I start to finalize this design, I am one step closer to starting to add the Bluetooth componentry to my work. I start with a store-bought Bluetooth speaker. The cheaper the better. This particular speaker was purchased from a $5 and under discount store. I chose this speaker because the overall size is small and I can tell it had a push button switch, which I prefer to use for my pieces. In order to be able to integrate the componentry of a Bluetooth speaker into my work, I have to be able to model the objects to the best of my ability. I do this by meticulously measuring each object with digital calibers. After taking down the measurements of the components, I snap a photo of the more complex pieces. I then import the photo into the modeling program so I am able to trace directly on top.
after I trace the exteriors of the object I properly resize. I also have to be mindful of an area to expose the push button for the off and on switch and the micro USB charging port. I do this by elongating those necessary areas so they can protrude from the final object during their subtraction. Before subtracting from my final sketch, I segment the object in basic pieces that will be glued together with the Bluetooth componentry inside. I then use the symbolic objects, the Bluetooth chip, lithium ion battery, and speaker to subtract from my sketched object. The objects are then ready for their final print. In preparation for casting, I begin to sprue the pave and bale component of my piece. Spruing is necessary to create vents in which hot liquid metal will flow into the created mold of my printed parts. I begin by isolating the parts that I plan to cast and begin to add sprues in the program using the line command to draw where I want my sprues and the pipe command to give them a 3D form. I do this because printing the object with the sprues integrated is significantly easier than adding them by hand. I am using a special formulated resin that emulates the properties of wax, making it perfect for the lost wax method of casting. All right, so we're back. Uh, so here we have uh, the sketch of what I was working on. Uh, this is basically using all of my different parts, uh, you know, that I printed different kind of uh, different sketches. And then later I just kind of put them together with glue. You can kind of see it like nothing really special going on here. This is actually kind of loose anyway, but that's okay. Then, uh, then I went back into the program and then I started to actually refine my design. As you can see here, I kind of definitely, I added some of the pave settings and this part that comes off, which I'm going to be casting this pave part and this, which will be the bail to my neck, to my pendant. Um, and here I basically kind of decided that I'm probably gonna put the speaker up in here. And I think, and with my other designs, I had to kind of elongate these areas just a little bit. So that way I could actually fit my Bluetooth speaker and my lithium ion battery in there. Uh, and so although it's in segments, we can kind of take a look at how this, how this played out. So this is my final piece where you have the back part for a button. Uh, our Bluetooth chip is gonna go in there, our lithium ion in here. And this is the top portion. This is where we're able to fit our little laptop speaker. Wires go through. The top piece here will be adhered on top of that. I'll have to make sure I do that straight too because I don't want to mess that up. And then we also have our castable parts. So this is the castable portion, the castable resin of this piece with my sprue. I added another sprue along the edge too. I did that all in the program as well. And then finally the pave part of the piece, which is right here, also with the sprue. So I'm going to be casting this in what's called alpaca alloy, which is actually just nickel silver. Uh, I tend to cast in nickel silver just because it's cheaper and it's got a, it's really nice to work with. 
at least for right now. So, so these are our components right here. These parts are also gonna go in. So this is gonna be for my button. So my button is right here. This is just gonna go right on top. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have a little nail, which is somewhere around here, but I'm gonna put a little nail in there and it's gonna have room to move back and forth because it's a momentary switch. And then I'm just gonna put this on top so it stays in place. And then we're also going to put this somewhere on the side. So that way um, our charging port can be accessed. And this is all stuff that'll also get refined after the fact too. Um, the, here's our Bluetooth board, as you've probably seen before. This is our momentary switch, so it's just a little push back and forth. It's got a really, really slight movement. So um, when you add like a longer button to it, it actually makes it a little bit more tactile. So as you can see what I'm aiming to do here, so you can see there, my button looks pretty good. It's a little bit off. I'm, I, ne I never get them perfect, but that's gonna be enough for me to have that button there. This will go over top of there, and I'll probably shave off those ends, or I might reprint it. We will see. I haven't decided yet, so we'll just have to see how that turns out. I might just do this, and then cut off the excess there, so, but it looks good so far. So, oh, and then this is our battery. Our battery fits perfect right in there our speaker board, our speaker, all of this will just kind of key together just like that. Um, there is gonna be a little bit of a space once I get all these wires soldered together and tuck them away, um, but that's okay. Usually I never get it just absolutely perfect. Very rarely does that happen, so. So uh, yeah, next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be soldering the battery to the board because I think both of these could get tucked in there together. But then once these are in place, I'm going to have to solder the speaker and then we're gonna do some testing to make sure everything works. Here I am using a simple electrical soldering setup to connect the battery to the Bluetooth board, which will be tucked away in the body of my final draft. I then solder the small laptop speaker that is hidden in the upper portion of my object to the Bluetooth board. Before I begin gluing all of the components together, I test to make sure the speaker is still operational. Using a two-part, five-minute epoxy, I begin to glue the components of my final piece together. Holding them tightly in my hands, to reduce the visibility of any gaps. After the piece has been set, I leave undisturbed for 24 hours until it is fully cured. Here I begin the process of investing and casting my pave and bale.
After my piece is fully cured for 24 hours, I begin to use another two-part epoxy called Water Weld. Water Weld I use to basically fill in the little gaps all along my piece. After it's cured, it creates a nice sandable texture similar to a hard plaster. All right, so I went ahead and uh, started to refine some of those edges. Um, you know, took off a lot of the excess, maybe a little bit missing, but um, I'm about ready to go ahead and just, uh, I'm gonna blow off some of this dust and then I'm gonna start doing my first coat of paint. All right, so, <clears throat> so now we have uh, basically our first couple layers of paint on my piece. Um, I'm still gonna do a little bit of like clean up on some of these areas and I'm gonna do a handful of different layers on this piece before I actually start doing any finishing touches. Um, but uh, next I'm gonna be working on the pave setting and maybe cleaning up this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I kind of like the rough texture on some areas but I'm probably gonna really clean up this top veil piece. And we'll kind of see where that goes, but um, I'm here at my home bench. Uh, and yeah, so uh, we'll probably make this like a little bit of a time lapse, but what I'm gonna do first is if you can see these. Um, so all of those little tiny cells, they have four little prongs around them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using a stone setting burr, which looks like this and basically it's going to create a seat and then a little bit of a lip so that way the girdle of a stone can sit in place. Maybe you can see that better there. So, so basically I'm gonna be drilling straight into this like that and we can take a quick look at what that looks like. So I'm just gonna be using my flex shaft and um, this just takes a little bit of practice and skill, but the whole idea behind this is that, you know, I want my stone to sit like just beneath the surface of the prongs. I don't want it to sit too low. And I don't want it to sit too high. Too low, I'm not gonna see enough of the stone, too high, and there's a chance it could fall out. So it's kind of a good middle, and the best thing I can say is like just practice, and you'll kind of get the hang of it, um, you know. Uh, and then I just kind of pick them up with my fingers and as I go, I start setting them. So, so let's go ahead and we'll, I'm gonna go ahead and do one and then uh, we're gonna probably do like a little bit of a time lapse and then just do the rest of them really quick, so. You can kind of see like, I kind of like to move it around a little bit. This, this burr seems like it may be a little bit uh, dull, so I'm actually gonna switch it out for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of burr life, just a lubricant. And luckily, you know, this came out as a good casting, so I don't actually have to drill those holes in. Yeah, this is a good one. I'll kind of brush this off a little bit. Kind of see, so that's what we're looking at right now. You kind of definitely see, like, I kind of created a seat and how that looks different compared to the other pieces. So, let's see if I can zoom in on this. So, cool. 
And uh, let me grab a stone. We'll just grab it off my bench here. And you can see how it sits in the piece. So there you go. Look at that. So it's just perfect, so then I'm gonna basically push these prongs over with my beading tool. So I'm gonna be pushing them over with my beading tool like this. Beading tool is basically just, um, it's a piece of metal and it's got a rounded insert and then kind of like these little cutting edges on the top, so just like a little inset dome and then the edges are sharp so that helps create a really nice prong so it's kind of a good example here of something in progress cool so i'm going to go ahead and uh usually what i do for this is i am going to just go ahead and cut all of those um this is a pretty sturdy piece so i don't have to worry too much about it bending this piece right here uh, was pretty thin, so I actually used a little bit of thermoplastic and I just set it on the thermoplastic and when I'm done setting those, I'll hopefully take it off carefully, so cool. All right, so I went ahead and I uh, cut all those seats in there. Um, you can see that, let's see if I can zoom, give it a little bit more clarity. So you can see I cut all those little seats in this. Um, the next thing I want to do with this is that I'm going to try to kind of like buff the inside of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just go kind of buff it with a brass brush. So something like this with my flex shaft. <clears throat> and then afterwards, I'm going to uh, basically use like a little brush. Um, they look like this. I'm going to probably get a new brush. Um, so one of these like horsehair brushes so I can like really kind of get into those areas and give it just like a nice little clean buff. Um, it's not super necessary, but uh, it definitely makes the stone shine better, especially when you have a nice, nice buffed surface underneath. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm back with uh, my piece all cleaned up. Looks nice and bright and shiny. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and set one stone so I can show you guys what I'm doing here. Uh, so I use two millimeter stones for like uh, pretty much all my pave settings. I just like how that looks. I think that they're just big enough that they're like, it's not crazy to set all of them, but they're also just small enough that I can uh, kind of put them on a, on a nice rounded form at this size. So. Um, basically what I do is I just put this in there with my finger and I kind of use my fingernail to kind of straighten it out. So if you can see that, like I just kind of like stuck the stone in there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my beading tool and I'm going to go one end and I'm basically going to roll it around and it's going to create like a nice little bead, like a nice rounded prong. And then I'm going to go to the opposite one and do the next one. While I'm doing this, I'm doing like moderate pressure and I'm basically watching the stone because the stone will move back and forth and you wanna make sure that you're kind of leveling it all out. Um, a lot of times like very fine jewelers spend a lot of time at this and they, you know, do this under a microscope to really make sure it looks perfect. Um, you know, as an artist, um, I am concerned about that, but I'm not like wildly concerned about it. And I really just do this by eye. So uh, this is really not like a crazy difficult thing to do. I really came up with this process kind of just watching some YouTube videos and then just really kind of uh, adapted it into my process. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this. I like to basically brace it on something I'm not gonna do crazy pressure, but I'm gonna do moderate pressure. And I'm basically just moving this all the way around in like a concentric circle. I'm gonna do my opposite one. 
I like to think of this as going north, south, east, and west, but you know, obviously that orientation changes depending on how you're setting these stones. Um, but you know, basically you set, you bead one, then you do the opposite. Actually, I made a new beading tool, and this one is actually a lot better. So I'm gonna use this one, because this will give me a nice, nice clean bead. And I'll basically go over these like a couple times too, just to make sure. And I like to kind of run my beading tool on it just to see if the, the stone is moving. Uh, but it looks like we're good. So if you take a look at that and see how close we can get for this. Let's see. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Oh yeah, there we go. So you can see now I have those nice little beads on there. And that stone is not coming out. And then once I buff it, I mean, those are gonna look perfectly nice and spherical, so. All right, so we're gonna go to the time-lapse. So we got all these stones set in there, uh, looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna go take it over to my buffing station, do a quick buff. Hopefully none of these fall out. Uh, it does happen, and usually I just have to recut the seat and just reset them. Uh, and then if they all stand during the buffing stage, I'm gonna throw it in the ultrasonic, and stones might pop out again. <laughs> but uh, that's just you know just the nature of the beast. So you know, but that also just gives me a couple stages of integrity. So uh, yeah, I'll take another, I'll take a quick video of me just buffing this real quick and then we'll see what it looks like once it's all nice and clean. All right, well, here we have our pave setting all finished and buffed looking pretty good. I definitely had a couple things pop out over time, but we got it all set. Hopefully it stays that way. Cool. All right, so uh, here's my finished piece. iPhone for size reference. Pave came out beautifully. Castings look great. That nice antiquing. Great ghosting. I'm gonna use this to turn on the piece. All right. It just indicated that uh, it connected so we can Press play. 